What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled people. Alright, in a previous episode we read a story called, Crazy Lady Accuses Me of Kidnapping My Stepson, Tries to Kidnap Him From Me, and here's an update called, Crazy Lady Accuses Me of Kidnapping My Stepson, Tries to Kidnap Him From Me, Update. I posted a few months back about this crazy trio of old ladies that tried kidnapping my stepson. It's on my profile, so if you want to know what happened, please go read it there before reading this as there are a lot of details. Anyway, my court day was yesterday. This has been drawn out more than I wish, but it is what it is. The leader is related to someone, I think it's her nephew, in the police, and they were trying their best to keep this hush-hush to avoid embarrassment. And shockingly, this isn't the first time this lady has done something like this, but we finally were able to get our day and it was not as good as I hoped. The lady kept insisting that she thought my son was in danger and that there was no way I was his father, blah blah blah. She lied. And and said that my son was running around the store by himself and she was only trying to help. Thankfully, the tapes from the store were brought in and showed me and my son arriving together and walking the store together. What I didn't notice the first time was this lady had been following me ever since I walked into the store from the parking lot. The lady had nothing to say. Finally, the judge drilled her, saying she should be ashamed of endangering and potentially scarring a child for life with her actions. She insisted it was for the safety of my son. But the judge shot back with, He was with his father. He was already safe. I mentioned to the judge that for about a month after, any time we passed that store, he would freak out and cry and would refuse to go near it. And that for a while, he couldn't sleep at night or sleep by himself. The judge acknowledged that and reamed the lady some more. The other two ladies were there as well and were looking scared as heck. <laughs> They both insisted the same thing, thinking my son was in trouble and I was trying to kidnap him. They even claimed to not know the leader and only chimed in once she said my son was her grandson. The judge looked at them and said, Well, you should have minded your own business. I understand you, referring to me, would also like to argue this is a hate crime. My attorney spoke up at this point. Yes, your honor. They made this determination that the child was in danger strictly because the skin tones of the two were different. He was pro filed and publicly humiliated by complete strangers simply because he looked different. She then took the law into her own hands and attempted kidnapping the child. As you can see on the tape, he was followed from the minute he arrived to the store. There is so much more that happened yesterday, but honestly, it's a lot to write and I'll probably be here all day writing. <laughs> the three basically got off with a slap on the wrist. Due to their age, the judge let them off with only probation and community service. The main lady got the least amount of all three due to playing the my nephew is a deputy card. But the judge grilled them good and they were all red and teary eyed. He threw out the hate crime saying there's not enough evidence to support the claim. Not really sure how to feel honestly but I guess it's nice they were somewhat punished but they got off way too easy for what they did to my son. The hate crime came from my attorney. I didn't even think of that. I just wanted these ladies to be held responsible responsible for what they did, and I don't feel that happened as much as it should have. Oh well. Man, what is with the justice system and playing favorites? It's ridiculous. Like, I don't know what would have to be different for her to get, like, at least a decent punishment. Like, maybe if she was a man? An old man trying to kidnap a kid? That looks uh, potentially a lot worse than, like, a woman kidnapping a kid, because there's all those other things that go along with a dude kidnapping a kid that you hear a lot about. But regardless, uh, I'm glad they at least tried to take it to the freaking courts but here we are another example of justice failing because i guarantee her craziness ain't over all right this story's called crazy karen tried to steal my goat this happened in 2003 when i was 13. it's a long intro but important for the story we lived on a farm and my mother rescued animals and bought purebred dogs and horses to breed and to show we had 50 plus animals at any given time but none were in cages. We had space for them to roam around the property. We had been doing this since I was 10, so I helped deliver my fair share of puppies and kittens. And then came the goat.
goats when I was 13. There were 50 white Angora goats in need of a new home after another farm closed down. We have the space, so we took them, and not long after that came breeding season. Some of the goats were too old to breed anymore, so they were separated from the other goats in bucks while everything went down. A few weeks later, we could see which were pregnant, so we started to make separate areas for them to settle into while they were pregnant and for when they had their kids. We had 15 pregnant goats. A few of the does were first-time moms. Most of them took to it quite well when the kids were born, but two of them rejected their kids. Angora kids only have one kid at a time on average. We tried to put those two kids with another family, but they didn't want them. So we had two choices, put them down or hand raise them. I chose option B. There was a boy who I named Stitch and a girl who I named Lilo. I did the whole thing on my own getting up every five hours to feed them and clean their pen. We kept them inside. After three weeks of me doing this, the goats became very attached to me, but mostly Lilo, who would follow me around the farm during the day, whereas Stitch would play with the other baby goats. After 10 weeks, I'd weaned them both off the bottle and they were ready to join the flock, which Stitch gladly did, but not Lilo. She got on better with the cats and dogs than she did with the other goats. She would follow me around everywhere and would start bleeding crying if I left the farm. So one day, I took her for a walk. I had a dog harness her size, so I put it on her with a leash. I had no clue how she'd respond to this, as she'd never left the farm before, let alone had a harness on. But she took to it straight away. It was like she was so happy to be with me that she didn't notice the harness. Along the first walk down the driveway, one of my neighbors complimented me on my well-trained goat. <laughs> Lilo absolutely loved it, so I made it the daily thing. Every day when I got home from school, I'd take her for a walk around town, and within a week, I didn't worry about the harness or a lead. She would just trot along beside me with her tail wagging like mad. And then came Karen. We went down to the creek with me sitting and watching Lilo play in the water. The creek was at the back of the tennis court that sat beside a sports field. There was a cricket match going on that day, but unless you walked off the field, you couldn't see the creek. So I was out of sight. Or so I thought. I heard someone walk up to me, so I turned to say hello. I didn't recognize her, so she must have been from out of town or a friend of someone from town. Hi, nice day, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Do you live on a farm? Yeah, just up the road. Do you have dogs? I'm looking to get a puppy for my son. We don't have puppies right now, but we should have some in a few months' time. Can I have yours? Pointing to Lilo. That's a goat. From a distance, I guess she could be mistaken for a dog, but not when you really looked. Don't talk to me like that that? I've seen you walking your dog around town. Now give me the dog. Excuse me? That is a goat. And no, you can't have her. We have other baby goats you can have instead if you really want one. After really looking and realizing it's a goat and not a dog. I don't like your tone, young lady. What would your mother think if she knew you were talking to me like this? You can go and ask her yourself if you want, but it's your funeral. I point in the general direction of the farm knowing what my mom's reaction would be to this woman if she was to try anything with her. How dare you! I'll teach you for disrespecting me! Karen proceeded to whistle and call out to my goat in the way you would a dog, expecting Lilo to come to her. When this didn't work, she walked over and attempted to pick her up. Here's the thing about goats. They're fast little buggers. If you think you're gonna catch one that doesn't want to be caught, you're in for a rude awakening. Lilo sprinted away from Karen and went in my direction. I picked her up and began to walk away, with Karen muttering profanities under my breath at me and her failed attempt at kidnapping my goat. Literally kidnapping. <laughs> I was worried she might follow me home, so I took a detour through another property that joins up to the creek and then to our property at the back of the creek. Even if she was to follow me, it's easy to get lost when going this way if you haven't done it before. I never saw Karen again after that, but it didn't discourage me from walking my goat. She was smart and loyal and damn fast when she wanted to be. Most of the time, she would be walking me, which is part of the reason I took her off the leash. A message to all Karens out there, don't steal goats! A sentence I never thought I'd type out. Ah, goats are so cute. Uh, there's a little goat yoga place near where I live, and I think that's pretty cool. 
This story's called Entitled Crazy Lady Loses It On Me Taking A Charity Book. So this just happened. Now for the story. My partner and I are very avid book readers, especially since we've had a lot of home time due to current circumstances. Whilst I normally download mine to an ebook, my partner likes to buy traditional paperbacks. We normally would buy in shops, but have recently bought most online. To save money, my partner swaps books with nearby neighbors and friends. She's a carer, so also shares with the people she cares for, so there is a number of books being shared around. At some point, everyone has read all the books, and we would usually take them to a charity shop. Unfortunately, most are closed at the moment, so we now have a bag full of books and no one to give them to. So today I learned a local grocery store has a charity book rack where you can leave books on a rack, and a few honesty money boxes to donate to said charities if you take a book from the rack. I needed some groceries, so I decided to take the bag of books with me, and so this is where our story starts. Here's the cast. Me. Store assistant. Uh, crazy entitled lady. And manager. I enter the store and see store assistant. Can you tell me where the charity book rack is, please? I have a large bag to drop off. It's in the corner of our store near the entrance. I'm the only one here at the moment, but if you leave the bag here, I'll sort it out later. If you're busy, I'll just empty these books on the rack and use my bag for my groceries later. Oh, thanks. It saves me a job. So off I go to the book rack and empty out about 200 pounds worth of books, and as I'm not busy, I had a look at what other people had brought in. Now, there's one thing about ebooks in that they don't have technical manuals. Someone had brought in a manual on how airplanes work, and I thought I'll take it to read. I check my pockets and realize I have no money on me, only credit cards. Oh, well, I brought plenty of books in for charity, so I'll take this and tell the store assistant about it when I pay for my groceries. Enter Crazy Entitled Lady. I sense some presents had been watching me for some time. A large, middle-aged Karen, dressed in a leopard skin dress, had appeared and was trying to get to the rack. I had been stacking for a while and thought I was in her way, so I moved to one side. She just stood there and stared at me. Then, out comes this piercing voice that still sends shivers down my spine as I write this. Who are you and what are you doing to my books? Yes, she did call them her books. You don't work at this store, so you shouldn't be playing with my books. Ma'am, I just brought a load of books here and put them on the rack as the store assistant couldn't leave her till. I don't give a crap what you were doing. You shouldn't be playing with my books. I buy lots of books from here, so leave my books alone. She then notices I have a book in my hand with my bag. What are you doing with my book? I watched you. You haven't paid for that, you thief. I'm getting the manager now! Manager! Manager! Now I'm a bit confused, as these are charity books, and the minimum contribution on the boxes states 50p a book, so I'm not really stealing after just dropping off 200 pounds in books. Crazy Entitled Lady then stomps off and a few minutes later appears with a manager. That's him! He took that book but hasn't paid for it! I want him arrested! Ma'am, calm down. I can't do anything as he hasn't taken anything from this store. Yes, he has. He's taken that book without paying for it. I work for that charity mentioned on the honesty box and he has not paid. Is that true, sir? It is true. I only have credit cards, so I thought it would be okay as I've just donated a large number of books. See? He's a thief. He's stealing from my charity. Get the police now. I'm not getting police involved for that small a sum. Sir, what does the donation say on that box? Minimum 50p, sir. Manager then rummages through his pockets, pulls out 50p in small small coins and puts them in a box as crazy entitled lady watched. Now ma'am, as you've hassled my customer over your charity, I'm gonna ask you to leave now. Crazy entitled lady goes quiet, turns around and slinks out of the store with her tail behind her legs. Manager apologizes to me and offers a discount, but I said no, as he's already bought me a book. I bought my groceries, store assistant thanks me and I go back home. Not the most dramatic of stories, but she did make me laugh. Next time, I'll wait for the charity shops to open. Hey, you know what? At least she left, right? Usually they uh, uh, commit a few felonies and then they leave forcefully. All right, this story's called Entitled Lady Wants to Use the Wi-Fi. So I work at McDonald's and our lobby is closed. I just started my break and before I could start eating, this guy and lady come in. 
and take a seat in one of our booths. My boss asked me who that is and I shrug. Then she asked me to deal with them. So putting on my best customer service voice, I do. Excuse me, our lobby is closed. Whoa, we just need the Wi-Fi. Our lobby is closed. I don't need the attitude. Our lobby is still closed. We just need the Wi-Fi. Can we sit outside? I don't see chairs. We have benches. Will the Wi-Fi work outside? I don't know. Ah, let's just go. They talk between each other while I go back to my food and complain in front of me. Then they start to leave. We're never coming back. Good. Hey, good response. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.